Turkey last February have released a global warning exactly what this guy said. I've been fighting that cause for the past five years. I have few written warning from a lot of my colleagues that this is unacceptable. How dare I could tell the patient to think about taking statin. It had to be taken without hesitation. I used to stop statin. The patient goes off insulin completely, goes almost about half of their oral hyperglycemic, maybe a little bit of glucophage, and this is as far as they're going to go. Just stopping statin only. Patient have no muscle pain. They could sleep the full night without a problem. Their erectile dysfunction disappeared. Their memory loss is gone. The muscle pain and aches and the joint pain is gone. I have patients who are on a waiting list for total hip replacement. Stopping the statin, they didn't need it because there's no pain anymore over there. It's amazing what it could do for you. Statin produce more yearly revenue than all professional US sports combined. Any negative studies are discouraged and critical researchers are blackmailed. Big pharma tactics are to persuade against basic research on drug-related toxicity. Cholesterol versus the HMG reductase. HMG reductase is statin. Cholesterol is crucial for energy, immunity, fat metabolism, leptin, thyroid hormone activity, liver-related senses, stress intolerance, adrenal function, sex hormone senses, and brain function. Drugging the HMJ reductase, which is statin, without knowing why the body had increased its cholesterol as a compensatory mechanism is a criminal act. What happened that patient come to you in your practice with cholesterol 5.6 or 6.1, without hesitation, you get the prescription out and you give him Crestor 10, Lipitor 40, Lipostat 40, NG10 20, or whatever you're going to give it available on the market. This patient is screaming to you, telling you that, investigate me. My cholesterol is high, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's increased in my body to compensate, to compensate for something that's going down. Whether your thyroid function is not working, or you have a chronic adrenal fatigue, your cortisol level is down, or you could have other problems like um, 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 heat intolerance, and body's trying to compensate for yourself. And what happened, rather than helping the body, you're giving it in a vicious circle, decreasing the amount of cholesterol more and more. <coughs> and then suddenly, you reach to the stage that, oh my God, I never felt so bad in my life like this. What's going on? In, in, in ladies, it's, in my own view, contraindicated to give a statin, except if there's a major problem. A Jupiter trial showed that 28% instance of diabetes for women. Cholesterol is extremely important in the insulin preferred action. In the contents of low cholesterol level, as with aggress aggressive statin therapy, preferred insulin resistance increases. If you go to a cardiologist and you have a little bit of chest pain, they'll give you baby aspirin and Lipitor 80, which is called aggressive statin therapy. So what you have done, you're pushing the patient toward insulin resistance. You are basically developing a metabolic syndrome in the patient. But what you're doing it in your back on your mind, you're chasing the LDL, the HDL, and the total cholesterol, which none of them mean anything. LDL is not a cholesterol. It's like a car carrying the bad cholesterol in the blood. HDL is not cholesterol, it's a car carrying another type of cholesterol. Measuring it, it was the easiest way for the multinational to try to measure the blood. It has nothing to do. In fact, if you need to know what's your cardiovascular risk with the cholesterol, you need to measure your apolipoprotein A or B.